to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves in each other. Uh, my name is Jeff Richardson. I'm uh, originally from Syracuse, New York, and I live down uh, in Boulder Creek, California now, in the mountains of outside of Silicon Valley. And um, a little about me, uh, a transformational engineer, who uh, I guess my job is really designing uh, those kind of change programs, both in organizations, corporations, and uh, you know, more nonprofits and uh, community organizations. I guess it's a an idea that I love. I think it's uh, so important to break down barriers between individuals and organizations. And um, Sometimes it can be more challenging than we think that it should be. Um, and it's something I think that I've done a, um, a good enough job over, over the time. I think I'm a very good listener and I do You know, feel compassion and uh, the pain and suffering of individuals. And I love, you know, to build a trust that allows people to share that. Because sometimes just being able to take what I'm thinking in my head or to help somebody else, more importantly, to take what um, they're thinking and to articulate it. When you take a thought and put it to words, um, some magic happens in that. You know, when you write it down, I think it's uh, you know, another form of that. But something about a conversation. Uh, um, uh, one of my business partners, Kimberly Weefling, introduced me to a concept of generous listening. And spending literally three minutes just really engaged in that individual's you know, and what they want to talk about. And what's interesting is whenever I teach that, it's so foreign to people. And it feels so uncomfortable from both a listener and a listening perspective. So it's like, wow, we don't even, you know, we haven't even taken enough time for three minutes. That three minutes seems like a really long time. Um, but it's amazing what happens in that three minutes. Um, for both the listener and the speaker. You know, the speaker is able to really explore an idea or a concept and, you know, without being distracted around where me, the listener, wants to take it. You know, it's uh, the, um, you know, the trip to Tahoe you start telling me about, yeah, I went to Tahoe too and let me talk about me and what my you know, so a lot of times the listener wants the attention to be put back on it. So I think empathetic listening is, you know, turning over th that desire and giving the gift of time. So the empathy is really about listening to people then for you. Yeah, I mean, it starts um, with listening. I mean. I think people can tell, though, when you're listening authentically or um, just lending a couple ears. <laughs> you know, there's something that happens in that process. I think that the, um, there's something that, you know, there's even some research about that, you know, how the speaker is looking and something is calculating about the pupils of my eyes you know, in how they make adjustments and they're picking up something from that on whether you really care about what I'm saying. And there's something in that caring um, that allows them maybe to share a little bit more because we're all somewhat, no, we're all guarded, you know, and how much I feel I can share with you is a function of that trust, you know, so the question I think then becomes, all right, so I am listening, um, you know, then what? You know, what do I have to do with that? Because empathy isn't agreeing with, um, it's for me, it's um, putting yourself in that person's shoes 
and trying to imagine the emotions you know, the individual is going through. And at that point, you know, when you can feel the hurt, when you can feel the frustration, when you can feel the anger, um, then you're tapping into um, you know, something that really drives you know, individuals. In terms of, uh, you've kind of explained it, is there a, a kind of experience that you had where you really gained some insight into the nature of empathy, like something that, act, an a anecdote or story of something that happened? Hmm. I mean, this conference has been great um, because I haven't had maybe some recent dialogue. Um, um, so it's yeah. filling, kind of that, giving you that quality. Is I'm understanding yes. it. Uh huh. Yeah. So you haven't had it outside, and now you're suddenly getting some of that sense yeah. of being heard. And sometimes maybe I'm more. Uh, I'm the listener, as opposed to the listened. Um, and it's very, you know, I'm comfortable in that role. But it's important to have relationships where you also, you know, feel listened to. Is there like a specific memory of something that happened, like an actual story of? Is there someone that you had that experience with that was kind of intense? Yeah, <clears throat> at dinner. Um, and talking with Len. Um, it was interesting how just a casual dinner conversation, you know, continued to get deeper. And um, I thought Len did a great job of, you know, listening empathetic with me. Um, I was talking about, you know, some of the emotions after my divorce. And Len had never been through divorce. But at the same time, you could tell that there was, you know, you know, some compassion for the, you know, the hurt that I had gone through, the growth that I was uh, experiencing, and uh, you know, and then the, you know, the hope coming out the other side of that. It's interesting the body language, mm -hmm. right? That somebody could say that they're listening to you. But you're picking up on these, you know, these cues, and we're also making assumptions, right? We don't know if that person pulled an all-nighter, you know, <laughs> doing whatever. But again, as soon as that happened, that changes um, that dynamic around how we share, you know. So there's um, there's a lot of responsibility in listening, you know, and how we do that makes a difference.